these elections will be the first national elections South Africans will have to enter their views on our country. Since load shedding has become a permanent feature in our country, since the controversies of Pala Pala, and since the ongoing degradation of our economy and the loss of jobs. I think in many ways this election is going to be a crossroads just like 1994 was. And Action SA is most certainly ready to run its campaign and to take its campaign to the corners of South Africa. We have spent a great deal of time building structures on the ground across South Africa because con uh, contrary to popular belief, it is those structures on the ground talking with people directly that wins elections more than social media or anything else. Well, I mean, we seem to be attracting a huge amount of young and unregistered people ourselves. The interesting kind of analysis is that our average age of an Action SA member is under the age of 38, uh, which is very young when you talk about political parties across the South African spectrum. And what we've seen by way of analysis is much as 20% of our 250,000 members are unregistered voters, first-time voters. So we have an enormous responsibility ahead of all other parties in this election to get those people out to register to vote on this registration weekend on the 18th and 19th of November, because we must be clear, people who haven't registered up until now are not going to do so for a political party that they've had the option to register for for some time and who they feel let down by. It's up to political parties like Action SA to animate young people to come out and register for the first time. Who leads the multi-party charter is a function of an election result and we must have that result so that the voices in the charter are proportional to the voices of South Africans. But there's no question all political parties, the DA and Action SA together, are working in a unified way to create momentum. Politics is all about momentum. We need to show the South African people that we can grow this charter, that more political parties are coming around the table, that we're engaging civil society, and ultimately that we're presenting a movement, more than just a group of political parties, that they can believe can deliver change for them next year. We took a decision a long time ago that we weren't going to be a party that has politicians writing policies about healthcare, but they've never healed a patient, or about education and they've never taught a child. So we embarked upon a process that relied on academia, but also professional South Africans, the teachers and the principals and the doctors and the nurses, to tell us how we need to fix their areas in government and how we can make their life easier to deliver change to the South African people. And the results came back with very practical ideas around how we fix these challenges. And I think in many ways, differentiating Action SA from all the other political parties in the environment who haven't taken that kind of approach to policy. Today we are here in order to ensure that the mobilization for elections next year kicks off, especially from the side of IEC as a custodian. The IFP is more than ready for the elections. All our systems are in place as I speak. We are preparing for a policy conference in December, out of which it will inform our manifesto and as we are here today we want to make a clarion call to the 13 million South Africans who are not registered that they must use this opportunity to register and become the voters because we know our people are saying what is the point of registering because the government is not doing what we want to do the message is simple, if you want a change in the government, you must be part of the election process. Use your vote to remove a government that is not delivering to your mandate. If you abstain, the status quo will remain. But if you participate, you will change things to what you want to be. We also want to appeal to the 14 million dormant voters who are registered but not participating because they say a similar thing as to what is the use of voting. The message is simple. Your vote is the power in your hand. Protesting will not remove a government that is failing. Abstaining will not remove that government. But if you participate with your vote. That is the only way that can talk for you to put in place the government that is going to deliver to your mandate. The IFP is more than ready 
in Wazuru Natal is our first target to reclaim that province at a national level. The second target is to be part of the government in the Gauteng province through a coalition government and at a national level we want to cut below 50 percent the ruling party so that the multi-party charter for South Africa as a coalition government becomes an alternative government to save our country from crime, unemployment, load shading, poor education and poor health system. The province of Wazulu Natal, like the whole country of South Africa, is experiencing poor service delivery. No new schools to the demands of our people we see coming forth. Even if hospitals are being built, but a number of them are without doctors, doctors are sitting at home unemployed because the government doesn't have money to pay them. So now, a major problem throughout South Africa is poor service delivery. The infrastructure, some infrastructure is getting old. There is no maintenance or repairs done by the government. As we see, even ESCO, we are suffering from load shedding. It is because of the poor maintenance of the infrastructure. The IFP has an experience. We once governed the province of Wazuru Natal. We once governed Wazuru Natal during the ex-while Wazuru government under Prince Mangosu Tuptelezi. We built schools, more than 6,000 schools. We built clinics, hospitals, police stations. We were able to attract the foreign investors to come and invest in Wazulu Natal as a way of creating job opportunities and boosting the economy. In South Africa, there is no foreign investor who can be keen to come and invest in a country with a load shedding to the level in which it is because every person will be running away from working at a loss. But the IFP will introduce swift measures to deal with load shading, to deal with crime, so that you create an environment that will be friendly to foreign investors to come and invest and thereby create job opportunities. Our youth, West graduates, medical students from various qualifications are sitting at home unemployed. unemployed. We never thought we will reach this stage after freedom in 1994. But anyway, 2024 is a turning point in South Africa and must be a watershed moment as we did in 1994. We removed the apartheid government, which was not helping us. 2024, we must remove the government of the day because it has failed us. It has failed our country unless South African citizens stand up and say, enough is enough. We are heading for the worst. Next week, Saturday, we will launch our program known as Kungawe. It is about you. We'll be appealing to each and every voter that to see a change. It is about each and every voter taking an initiative, not looking at the neighbor, but if each and every person would say, it is my responsibility, and all of us saying, it is our responsibility, we will see a change in our country next year and see a new government that will be a government of the people that will deliver services people want desperately. It's going to be the first election in 30 years in our democracy that's going to be competitive. And it's going to be the first election in 75 years in our country where no party is going to merge with an outright majority. And that means that there's everything to play for. And in this election, every vote is going to count, which is why this launch and this registration, this message there is so important because there are 13.8 million people of, of uh, voting age who are not registered. We've got to get those people onto the voters' roll because you can't complain about load shedding, unemployment, crime and criminality and poor services, you've got to vote for change. 
that's going to be able to fix those things and to usher in a new government that's going to put the country onto a new trajectory. So every vote's going to count in this election and that's why we've got to convince every South African to be part of building that new change agenda in the country. So I think we are hopeful. We've been running a, a number of registration campaigns. Our Power to the Registered campaign has been focused uh, in certain aspects directly at the youth. And we've been very pleased at the uptake. It is a big change from elections past. I think that the big difference in this election is that change can happen. In the past, it was always the ANC was going to win. We all just didn't know about how much they were going to win. This election, every poll shows us that the ANC is going to lose its majority, which means it's game on for every political party in the country. And that's the whole point behind the multi-party charter, bringing political parties together around a common set of values and principles to make a compelling offer to people in South Africa that we can change the country as long as people come out to vote for that change. And the Germany situation is quite similar to ours. They also have a proportional representation system and their upper house, their Bundesrat, is very similar to our National Council of Provinces. Uh, obviously, big lessons learned there. Coalition agreements, a lot more detailed than ours. Some of them running into 150 pages. Coalition agreements are sacrosanct. Once they're signed, people do not break them or just simply walk away from them because there are electoral consequences for them. And of course, building trust is so important. But I'm also heartened by what happened in Poland last week, where Donald Tusk has now led an opposition pre-election pact into a election victory in the Polish elections, where they're going to sweep out uh, the uh, PIS party and replace it with a multi-party coalition government uh, of a variety of parties at the rational centre. And that should show us that if we can do it in Poland, we can do it here in South Africa, but voters need to come out. 74% turnout in that election. When people turn out, change can happen. Look, um, what is important is that the IEC must play its role in terms of voter education because it is the duty of the IEC to ensure that people are knowledgeable about the importance and the power of voting. Now, if you are going to have communities, particularly in the townships and the villages, where you find that there is very few uh, voter education programs done by the IEC, then it makes us to question as to why in the affluent areas people are educated about voting, whereas in the lack communities people are not educated about the power of voting. So that is the first issue. The second issue um, is about the electoral processes because we've got presiding officers that are appointed from a SAT, an ANC-aligned SATU, which is a union, and you find that these teachers commit a lot of crimes. We know that in the last election there was a teacher who voted for more than 20 times. There's always ballot papers that are found somewhere, marked ballot papers. Now, for us as an organization, we want the IEC to deal with these issues that erode the credibility of the electoral processes. And then when it comes to campaigning, parties will campaign, but IEC must do its part when it comes to ensuring that there is an increase in terms of the numbers of people that vote and ensuring that these issues that erode the credibility of the IEC processes, or of the electoral processes, are dealt with. Look, it is for people to realize, Zugoba, power belongs to them. Power does not belong to an elite politicians who want to be treated like celebrities in our country. People must realize, Zugoba, they put people into power. Those people are there to serve them. Otherwise, if we do not get that core of what it means to be in a democracy, which is it is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, then when you talk about policies, you talk about anything else, it won't matter because people do not understand that the concept of leaders or public representatives, public representatives are there on behalf of the people and they must always act in the best interest of the people, not them, themselves.